Hey, hello YouTube people. I am terrible at intro, so we're just gonna get right into it. We are going to be making a skillet chocolate chip keto cookie today. I anticipate it to be very good and you are probably seeing a clip of it right now as I am talking, so hopefully it turned out well. This is based off of my favorite keto chocolate chip cookie recipe that I created a while back after I tried over a hundred different chocolate chip cookies that were keto friendly. Um, I tried all different techniques and that's how I came up with this recipe. So it really is the best keto chocolate chip cookie recipe because I've done all the testing. Uh, everyone likes chocolate chip cookies, so I figured not. why not make a gigantic one. Basically just slice it, eat it like cake, and um, it's basically a nice way to justify eating multiple cookies in one. So anyways, again, I hope you guys like this recipe and let's just get into it and get going. Okay, so to start off with, we are going to add two and a half cups of almond flour to the bowl. As always, I'm using my very trusty scale. You can always find the link for that in the description box below. I've had it for over six years, only changed the batteries twice, and it's super accurate. I've never found one that's worked better. Next, we are going to add coconut flour. We're gonna add about 10 tablespoons. This just helps to thicken up our cookie a little bit more. Um, adding coconut flour also helps us not to add so much flour in total, so our total calories of our cookie can actually be a little bit less. Plus, the texture ends up being better anyways. Then we'll add two teaspoons of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of xanthan gum, one teaspoon of baking powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Next, we'll just whisk everything together and make sure that we get out any clumps. Then we'll just set this aside. I've now preheated my oven to 330 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, we're just gonna add one cup of butter to a cast iron skillet and we're going to heat it over medium heat until it starts to melt. Just give it a few stirs while it's melting. I'm using a rubber spatula for this so don't scrape my pan. And eventually we want our butter to brown. So to make brown butter, we're basically just waiting until our butter starts to kind of um, sizzle a bit and it will start to get really foamy right before it turns a brown color. And then once it turns brown, we want to immediately remove it from the heat and kind of give it a few more stirs and that's how you create a brown butter, which gives a better taste to the cookies. After you've let your brown butter sit for a while and not be hot, like super hot, just a little bit warm, that's when you can add your sweeteners, which are going to be about half a cup of both allulose and a uh, brown sugar alternative called sucrin. Um, I will link both of those below, and of course you can uh, read more about the exact amounts in the full recipe. Um, but just don't be dumb like me and <laughs> stir them in while it's still hot because then you have to let it sit before you can add your eggs and the sweetener tends to clump up and cause clumps in your cookies. So I don't recommend it. Just wait until your butter has cooled quite a bit to about room temperature where it's still melted but it's not hot, then add the sweeteners. And here is what it looks like when you don't follow that step. <laughs> So anyways, um, just pretend like this mixture is smooth right now like it should be, but right after you add your sweeteners, you want to slowly kind of stir in your eggs. Um, if your mixture is actually room temperature like it should be, you shouldn't really have an issue with adding the eggs right away and just whisking them in with preferably a rub rubber whisk if you have it. Um, but for me, mine was still a bit hot, so I just slowly, slowly whisked the eggs in and tried to break up my clumps of sweetener which again were super annoying, but it didn't really affect the final outcome of my cookie. It actually turned out fine, so just ignore this part. Um, but yeah, basically this is when you add your egg. And then once your egg is mixed in and everything is smooth and not lumpy like mine, um, then you can add your vanilla extract. Um, for this recipe, I just use two teaspoons. So we'll just mix that in. 
Use a whisk to get rid of any clumps that you may have caused. Then we're gonna go ahead and add half of the flour mixture from earlier. We'll use our rubber spatula to start to stir that into everything until it gets thick. And please ignore my elbow. I'm so sorry. I'm not professional at this yet. <laughs> and my camera skills aren't great. And then once it's pretty much mixed in, we can add our second half of the flour and then we'll just stir that in the exact same way. Um, you want to mix this quite a bit until it gets really thick. Um, it actually helps kind of activate the exanthin gum and also the allulose, surprisingly. Um, both of those ingredients help make the cookie chewier and also it'll thicken the more you stir it. Alright, so ignore the little clumps of basically caramel in mine caused from the sugar sitting in the melted butter. But basically, this is what your dough should look like once it gets nice and thick. Then what we'll want to do is of course add our chocolate chips, the best part. These are Krizda chocolate chips, they're stevia sweetened. Um, they're easily easy to find in Canada, but if you are in the US, you can also purchase Chalk Zero chocolate chips or Lily's chocolate chips. Those are two other good um, low carb brands. And if you don't have any of those, you can also just purchase 90% dark chocolate and break it up in chunks. It actually looks more rustic that way anyways. All right, and then next we're just gonna take our hands um, and then basically just press it down into the pan, just as if we're making one ginormous um, crust out of cookie dough, which is essentially what we're doing. Again, I am so sorry for my elbow. I wish I realized while I was filming this, but I'm just gonna have to deal with looking at the corner of my arm for the entire video. All right, now I'm just smoothing out the top with a spatula and just making it as even as I can. And then now we're ready to move our giant cookie to the oven for 20 minutes. Okay, and then here's what it looks like coming out of the oven. It turned out so pretty. I was actually shocked I didn't have to adjust the time at all. 20 minutes was perfect for mine. If you liked your cookie more cooked through, you might want to do a little bit longer than 20 minutes. This cookie turned out so good. It has nice crispy edges, but it's super gooey and soft in the center, just like I like my cookies. And this cookie also kind of sets up more as it cools. So if you find it too hard to lift pieces out at first, um, I promise you it'll get easier later on. Um, this is super good even the next day. I was so mad because the piece that I recorded taking out of the pan just kind of like smushed together because it was still so hot. But my piece after this was like perfect, came out flawless, so ignore my first piece. This one was not nearly as pretty as the other ones. For reference, here's the second piece that I cut. It looks so much better. Also, I swear the lighting just looks better um, on my iPhone than it does on my expensive camera. I don't know why, maybe that's my fault, but anyways. Look how good this looks, and then just look at the giant cookie I still have left. This is so good, guys. Here are a few more slow-mo close-ups just because I couldn't help myself. hope you enjoyed this recipe. I had fun making it other than messing up the sweetener a little bit. <laughs> that was my own fault again for trying to rush the recipe. But anyways, it turned out really great. Um, it's super gooey in the center, but just cooked around the edges, just the way I like it. So good. Um, if you guys like this recipe, please thumbs up the video, um, subscribe, leave a comment. Really helps me out. I'm really working hard to try and grow my YouTube channel. Um, because it's that one platform I've just never really got the hang of and um, I'm working at it, I'm trying, and uh, my website is super important to me. So anyways, if you check out the recipe there, that's awesome too, um, either way. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I hope you like this. I hope it helps you on your keto journey, gives you something fun to look forward to and make. And 
yeah, I hope you check out more recipes on my channel. I try and post at least once a week. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. So have a good one. Bye.